Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with the CEO of Hemlane, Dana Dunford. How you doing, Dana? I'm great. Thanks for having me here. Oh man, this is this is this is a rough day. This is a rough day. We got uh, a CPI reading, uh, which again was above expectations. Headline core month. I mean, it's just it's just bad. So what does this mean for us? It means the Fed's going to be raising rates, the terminal rates higher. You know, just all of these things going on. But you and I are landlords. And, you know, you, you support tens of thousands of landlords across the country. And I just, I think we need to have a, a heartfelt discussion with landlords. It's probably time to go get operationally focused, right? The next 90 days, four or five months, I am going to be looking at my existing portfolio. What is going on? Because I'm seeing taxes go up, insurance go up, uh, costs go up. I had a bid to turn a small apartment that was, 70% higher than it used to be. So I think there's a lot of things landlords yeah. need to do to operationally focus. Cause maybe like me, we were focused on buying and maybe we yeah. weren't operationally focused the last year or so it is time to get operationally focused. And I know him lane supports that. So let's talk about getting operationally focused. Yeah, so the first thing um, I'd like to to comment on is when you look at um, your your cash flow every month and um, checking what are the biggest line items. And obviously, when we just start at the top, the first, which is the most important to you, is your rent, your rental income. And so the first question is, how is this impacting tenants? If you, if it's impacting you as a landlord it's going to be impacting your tenants even more. It's not like with the news that came out this morning that suddenly all of these tenants are having their um, boss come to them and say, we're going to give you a raise because of inflation. That's not happening. You know, we've got three more months until the end of the year. Um, everyone's going to be feeling it. And so there may not even be raises or bonuses there. And so I think the biggest thing is to understand the situation also with your tenants and how it's impacting them. Because we know that 50% of tenants are living, more than 50% are living paycheck to paycheck. And so once you have inflation, their um, discretionary spend and what they're spending on just anything in general obviously dries up that percentage that they have to spend on rent. Um, so that would be the first line item. Um, what are your thoughts? I want to hear you the next one. Oh, I, th I think there's, I just think there's a lot going on, right? Um, I think it's a lot more fun to be a landlord that's looking for deals. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the excitement is. But again, we all do this purportedly for cash flow, right? If you're following one rental at a time, we both know that appreciation happens, but it's not something we bet on, count on, or even plan for. Um, but sometimes you got to get operationally focused. And when I got that bid yesterday to turn a small unit, it was 70% more. I'm like, what the heck? Right. I knew, I knew, right. Cause I knew costs were up, but I hadn't done a detailed review of a bid probably in 12 months. Yeah. Right. Cause you know, you have these units just, they come up and yesterday I was just in a, in a spot where I could look at it. And I'm like, and this is, it. it's not. It's everything, right? The cost of is up, which again, I trust my team. I don't think they're hitting me with cost plus, right? I think they're just passing on the cost of the stuff, but labor's up. It, it's it's going everywhere. So I think there's been a lot of landlords and maybe I'm, you know, part of the, the challenge. We've been talking about rent increases and, you know, all of those things and rent has to slow down. But as a landlord with units, I have a whole nother side of the equation expenses. And I think it's time to manage them. The, the first thing I would tell a landlord who's seeing these costs are is maybe you're like me and you got comfortable with the team you had. I have, I, I've been there 20 years, you know, roughly the team I work with is the same team I worked with five years ago. Right. We just kind of rinse and repeat. I can tell you this, I'm going to go back and rebid some jobs just to see yeah. maybe my team's got a little, uh, a little too uh, comfortable. Maybe yeah. there's a little bit too much of a spread. So, I mean, I haven't rebid a job in, yeah, probably a year. So, uh, you know what? We're going we're gonna to do that. We're going to go rebid jobs. We're going to go find out who's hungry. Uh, if unemployment goes up, I expect contractors of all ilks to be not as busy. So, you know, uh, I believe there's a lot in having a great team and trusting them and all of that. But, you know, I think it's time to rebid some jobs. I mean, 
saving a thousand dollars on a turns real money. That's all bottom line cash flow. So the first thing I would tell people is, you know, maybe it's time to rebuild, build, rebid jobs. And I haven't done that in quite a while. And maybe that's shame on me. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Um, when you look at your operating expenses, if you think about it, there's pro- the the highest ones are usually property management and then your maintenance and repairs. And so it is time to go back out and say with those um, contractors that you're using, is this the um, best price for the quality that I can get? Now, keep in mind with that, there's one caveat. When you do go through it, sometimes when you bid out jobs, right? You also want to make sure there's a quality there. And so there will be this, and you have to be patient with it, this point where, and it it depends on how many units you have. I mean, uh, Michael, you have um, a lot, a lot more than the average landlord, but there will be a point where you probably make some sort of mistake in that, where you have a job, there's a lower um, bid, you take it, but just the quality is not there. And you just have to be patient and go through those growing pains until you can rebuild up your team and have a really strong team um, to your point. And so that is one thing just to keep in mind of, of doing the work, making sure that um, you're staying true to here's here's what I expect to be done and making sure that you are getting the best price for the best um, best work. And there's always a balance there. Yeah, th- this is just a process. I mean, this is what we went through years ago when we were going through property managers and having to fire them and all the expectations, communications. I can tell you the process now I have with my team, right? So this job I got that I was shocked at, I'm going to rebid that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if it comes within, I don't know, $1,000, for example, uh, I will go to my team and say, do you want to match this? Right? Because yeah. again, to your point of quality, I know what I'm going to get. I've got dozens of units and with some of these folks, probably hundreds of, of repair items, I match or not. And, and then it's on the business owner to make a choice, right? Do they want to match the bid uh, and, and move forward? Or do they want to, maybe they want to gamble and say, you know what, I don't think the, that provider is going to provide the quality or, or the speed or whatever and go try them. Cause you're right. I've, I've had plenty of jobs that I've had to have redone because they didn't meet my expectations. Yeah. Right. A paint a painting job comes to mind where the the painter got the wrong color. He, he mixed up his jobs and he put the wrong color on the outside of my house. Uh, I remember uh, that. I'm like, really, dude? Really? This you uh, th- did you think that was an outside color? What are you doing? But yeah, I mean, I've had to, I've had mistakes and had to re- redo things. So um, there is a there is a process to do this. I would tell a landlord today to go back and look at your last, especially if you have Hemline in, in, in the reporting is to go back to your last year or two, take out like the top jobs, right? Water heaters go out seemingly every year, maybe, uh, you know, uh, a plumbing leak or just, you know, pa- interior painting, just get those jobs. And if you don't have a work order, just get them rebid just so you know, Yeah. Uh, as a landlord, the, you know, when I go back and look at my yearly expenses, it's either a roof, which are kind of one in a 20 year thing, or it's turns, right? Turns are the big thing. So if, if you have a few units like your Dion, you have whatever it is, 16 or so. Um, I actually might be proactive and get a bid to turn just to, I was, I was really shocked at the cost yesterday. I knew things were up, but I didn't expect it yeah. to be 70% up. Yeah. And then one other thing as you're operationally focused, um, you know, going back to your tenants and saying, let's go repull your credit and stuff is, is not something that tenants are going to agree to, especially if you're in, in your lease right now without a renewal. But you could go back and just say, hey, I know this is hurting hurting you, um, news in the market, and they might not be tracking inflation like you are. But, you know, hey, I know that the cost of, of goods is getting more expensive. Um, you know, let me know. Um, I just want to do a cross check on like your income. What what are you making every single month? Um, is it really hurting you? And so having those conversations as well, because there's kind of two things that come out of it. Um, the first is, oh, wow, this tenant really is cost burdened where they're spending more than 30 percent of their income um, on their rent every single month. I mean, if you see that up to, you know, 60 percent and they don't have any help. That's like a, well, maybe we should actually, before winter comes, 
consider breaking some sort of lease for them, having them move um, into a different place that might be more affordable for them, and then bringing someone else in. And so that stability, I think, is really important because what you don't want costs to be going up across the board for everything for your portfolio and then a non-paying tenant. Uh, you know, tenants are good people for the most part, uh, you know, mass majority of them are, um, you have a few exceptions, just like on the landlord side, mm -hmm. but most of them are good. They want to pay their rent. And so if you can open up that conversation of, Hey, I know the market is changing. I know the cost of goods is getting more, ex uh, more expensive. How can we help to make sure this is the right situation for you? Uh, would be great. If they say no changes to my income since the application, just go back to their application, pull it, see what it is, make sure that um, income to rent ratio makes sense. It's at that three to one um, or, or better than that. Um, but that would be the other thing because the worst thing for you is to actually have a situation where you have a tenant who's not paying rent and they're a good person, they've just fallen behind given the, the, the market. Yeah. The other thing I, I just need to put out there is, is if you're a landlord like Olivia and I, where we didn't really raise rents all that much the last two years, we did if the unit turned, obviously we took everything to market if it was vacant. But the last two years or so, we, we've been in a, a fortunate position where we didn't have to raise rents to, to maintain cash flow. And um, we raised a little like two, three percent, but but nothing like we could have. I have to tell you, that's that's not going to be the case this year. Right. We're, we're getting uh, insurance quotes that are up a bunch. We've got this. We've got all our costs going up and we absorbed that for a little while. Uh, if you're a landlord like Olivia and I, uh, it's time to realize that um, you you you, you got to raise you got to raise rent. And yeah. unfortunately, it's coming. And you know, we've seen in, in California, Section 8 rents jump roughly 10% year on year. So uh, the, the approvable amount. So I, it, there's a lot of folks that have been talking about rents exploding, but there's also been a lot of mom and pop landlords who didn't raise rents or didn't take rents to where they could have. Yeah. Uh, it's it's You probably should go back and look at that. And um, you've got to cover your costs. You know, you're not in the um, charity business. You've got to be able to cover yeah. your costs. You are providing a service. And uh, it's unfortunate, but, um, you know, in, just like a business, right? When when input costs go up uh, at the grocery store or, uh, you know, a candy maker or whatever it is, you've got to you got to raise the cost of the finished good. Right. And, you know, that's yeah. that's that's going to be the conversation I have with my team. Uh, I think we have it scheduled for Friday. Say, OK, well, we got to go back and look at our portfolio. I know we told you not to raise. Well, it's it's time to go uh, across the board and, and do some rent increases. So, yeah, and we had um, in our our most recent survey, fifty five percent of landlords did not raise it above three percent, and yeah, so there's definitely you know, and that's the the small mom and pop between like one to fifty units, mostly on the the smaller end. So there is an opportunity there. Um, and the other thing I would say is it is a reminder that every year. Um, you know, when times are good and you don't have this inflation, it's very easy to just keep the rent always the same, but make sure you are doing a slight increase every year to set that expectation because mm -hmm. CPI is going up always. And so you just need to make sure you set that expectation um, and make sure on the operations side that you don't get too far behind to your point, Michael. Yeah. One of the things that I love you've done for this community, Dana, is you put together a PDF for your free 30 day trial. Where can people get uh, the trial? And then we'll talk about what you've built for them. Yeah, you can go to Hemlane, www.hemlane, which is H-E-M-L-A-N-E.com. And then click the try for free. Um, do mention um, Michael Zuber or one rental at a time. Either one works um, to get 20% off your first year. That's awesome. So what Dana has done for you, the CEO of Hemlane, she's created a PDF, which you can find in our free course link below of how to use their 30-day trial. And, and I really think there's a lot of landlords that should practice being landlords. Look at the audit trail, look at repair requests, look at collecting rent, all of those things. And then if you are in the paid course, how to get started one rental at a time, she took the extra time to create an entire video series for you. So do yourself, do yourself a favor, get the trial today and then spend the next 30 days becoming a better landlord. Dana, thank you so much. Great, thanks for having me.